Welcome to the Speaker and TEDx Course Module 1. Today, this is Tammy Kling and Bruce Pulver along with hundreds of people all over the world joining you to learn how to be a top speaker, how to audition for a talk, whether it's a TEDx talk or something else, and how to monetize your platform. So impactful and so authentic. Um, tears and tears of sadness and also t- tears of joy about where this person has gone since that scenario. So just those were just two examples, Tammy. Yes, and so the, the point is, if you think about TED commercially, it's not going to feel right. So don't think about it commercially. The way to pick your top topic, and we'll certainly cover this as the course goes on, but the way to pick your topic is truly to pick a topic that is just burning in your soul. And we certainly help people through that, but the best way to to really think through that is what is that one thing that you feel like you have to get out? And it doesn't have to be anything commercial or or saleable. And I really, the first thing we want to address in this course is what is TED and how do you prepare and present? Because a lot of people have misconceptions and they think that you have to be perfect. And I had to coach our TEDx judges. I had to say, hey guys, you're not, look, they had a scorecard, right? And I said, you're not looking for that perfect polished sales presenter. We don't want that. TEDx is about ideas that matter. And specifically our platform, we really wanted ideas that could change lives. And when it went out and went viral could impact the world, whether it was kids or adults. And so don't be perfect because When we went through our first round of auditions, we had hundreds of videos and many were people that did almost a commercial. Some people actually did submit their business commercial. So there's a very famous gym, their commercials are on television, they're they're global, and they submitted their commercial for their CEO. That's not gonna work because a TEDx isn't a commercial. And so you really have a very, short amount of time to capture them. And it's unlike another speaking engagement where in a speaking engagement, someone may ask you, okay, come talk to my sales team about results or adversity. But in a TEDx, you have 11 to 14 minutes to really, really change lives. And you have to be very authentic and when I, when I told the judges not to look for perfect, still they fell back into their old habits. And what happened was there was one, one guy who auditioned from another country and, he, and all the judges rated him negative. And when it got to comments time, one of our judges was like Simon Cowell and said, you know, his shirt was all wrinkled. It looked like he rolled out of bed. And it truly did. It looked like he rolled out of bed. His shirt was beyond wrinkled. But for me, that didn't matter. And here's why. I said to the judges, I said, Einstein looks homeless. Look at any picture of Einstein. But the world reveres him for his mind. Mother Teresa walks around slums, you know, with no makeup on, but the world loved her heart, you know? So we're looking beyond the polished sales presentation. We wanna look at their heart. And we do, to drive this, it's really hard to kind of get out of your, oh, I wanna be polished and perfect mindset. In fact, I think I, I was, I violated that. I think I was a little too reserved and polished, but we want to show you an example of what we're talking about to kind of prove this point to you. Yeah, so Tammy, let me uh, share screen and then we're gonna play about five minutes of a talk and then we're gonna come back after that 
and have some more discussion around that. So give me a second to work the technology. As you have questions, feel free to hit comments. Now remember, this is an example. Hey Sam, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Sam and I just turned 17. A few years ago, before my freshman year in high school, I wanted to play snare drum in the Foxborough High School marching band. However, and it was a dream that I just had to accomplish, but each snare drum and harness weighed about 40 pounds each. And I have a disease called progeria so just to give you an idea, I weigh about only 50 pounds. So logistically, I really couldn't carry a regular size snare drum. And because of this, the band director assigned me to play pit percussion during the halftime show. Now, pit percussion was fun. Uh, it involves some really cool auxiliary percussion instruments like the bongos, timpani, and timbales, and cowbell. So it was fun. Um, but it involved no marching and I was just so devastated. However, nothing was gonna stop me from playing snare drum with the marching band in the halftime show. So my family and I worked with an engineer to design a snare drum harness that would be lighter and easier for me to carry. And so after continuous work, uh, we made a snare drum apparatus that weighs only about six pounds. I'm just going to give you some more information about progeria. Um, it affects only about 350 kids today worldwide. So it's pretty rare and effects of progeria include tight skin, lack of weight gain, uh, stinted growth and heart disease. Last year, my mom and her team of scientists published the first successful progeria treatment study. And because of this, I was interviewed on NPR and John Hamilton asked me the question, what is the most important thing that people should know about you? And my answer was simply that I have a very happy life. <laughs> so even though there are many obstacles in my life, with a lot of them being created by progeria, I don't want people to feel bad for me. I don't think about these obstacles all the time and I'm able to overcome most of them anyway. So I'm here today to share with you my philosophy for a happy life. So for me, there are three aspects to this philosophy. So this is a quote from the famous Ferris Bueller. The first aspect to my philosophy is that I'm okay with what I ultimately can't do because there's so much that I can do. Now, people sometimes ask me questions like, isn't it hard living with progeria? Or what daily challenges of progeria do you face? And I'd like to say that even though I have progeria, most of my time is spent thinking about things that have nothing to do with progeria at all. Now, this doesn't mean that I ignore the negative aspects of these obstacles. When I can't do something like run a long distance or go on an intense roller coaster. You know, I, I know what I'm missing out on, but instead I choose to focus on the activities that I can do for things that I'm passionate about, like scouting or music or comic books or any of my favorite Boston sports teams. Yeah. So, <laughs> however, sometimes I need to find a different way to do something by making adjustments. And I want to put those things in the can do category, kind of like you saw with the drum earlier. So here's a clip with me playing Spider-Man with the Foxborough High School marching band at halftime a couple of years ago. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow. So is there anyone who wants to take a guess? Uh, I don't know if we're frozen, Bruce. Oh, sorry. I don't know if we're frozen, but. You're good, Tammy. I can hear you fine. OK. So if you want to take a guess in comments, how many views he has on his talk? So Christy says 2 million, Ellen says 20 million. Thank you for not Googling. That means you didn't cheat. <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, okay, go a little higher, a little higher. Yeah. So he has, I'm gonna tell you, he has 48 million views. And what a legacy, right? And he was a junior at Foxborough High School when he died shortly after this talk. And he was 17, he died on January 10th and 2014, but 2014, right? So his legacy lives on and he has 48 million views, almost 50 million and 50,000 comments. That means 50,000 people wrote a comment about an unpolished presenter who wasn't perfect physically, who weighed 50 pounds, but who had a talk that he delivered, that he, he could have delivered a talk on progeria, but he didn't. He delivered a talk on my philosophy for a happy life. So 50,000 people commented and 50, almost 50 million were able to watch this talk and think to themselves, gosh, if he can find some happiness or joy knowing that he's likely going to perish from this disease, so can I. And as you can see, his happiness and the topic that he chose was authentic because he talked about how he doesn't focus on what he can't do, but what he can do. So we just wanted to really drive home the thought that for TED or TEDx, and he's on the TEDx platform, which is the same as TED, it's just local, right? A local, because they can't continue to have TED Talks on just one stage, so they branched out globally. Um, he did a TEDx, nearly 50 million views, and he proves that it's not how you say it, but it's what you say that matters most. And his talk isn't powerful just because he had a disease. You know, his talk is powerful because he was able to synthesize what people would want and need from him. And that message lives on forever. So I hope that that can kind of shift your mindset to when you're picking a topic, you might be tempted to pick a topic that you think will really make you an expert, but people are really um, driven by the heart these days. And there's plenty of uh, best-selling authors, you know, uh, global speakers that are doing great, like at the top of their game, because they're just talking about something that was the adversity in their life. Another example, yesterday I was with Nick Vujicic, no arms, no legs top global speaker, right? And he's got no arms and no legs. And he could talk about real estate. He's passionate about flipping houses. He could talk about sales. He could talk about how to be a great speaker. He could talk about anything. But Nick is a guy who talks about never give up, right? That's his topic. And he talks about, 
you know, suicide, how he wanted to commit suicide. So he talks about his worst life moment. So Bruce and I just really want to encourage you today to think differently about that topic. If there's anything commercial about it, it probably doesn't belong on the TEDx stage. It might be a keynote that you can use inside a company, but it, people will know if there's kind of any hint of something that's not authentic. What do you think about that? And Bruce, what do you have to say on that? Yeah, I mean, that. first of all, I'm a drummer. So when every time I watch Sam's talk, it just like kind of puts a big lump in my throat, quite honestly. And I, I think what we're really talking about here is, is your why, right? It's what is it that pulls you every day? What is it that is your, is, you just want everyone to understand, and it's usually about an experience you've had in life. And maybe I'll, I'll spend a couple minutes, Tammy, and just chat about mine. I mean, I, I, I was, I'm, I'm, I've been a lifelong mind game guy, but I've also been quite a self-doubter a lot of my life. But in mindset, in thinking about my mind games, I think about it in baseball, I think about it in music, I think about it in my career. And that is when I for some weird reason, if I was in a, a tough sporting event, playing baseball against you know, the best pitcher in the town, I, I, I would say things to myself like, I got this, or I can hit this, just make contact, as opposed to, oh no, this guy struck out 17 guys in a game, whatever. And I found that that helped me perform better. But, but I felt like it was kind of a weird thing that I did until a lot of things happened in my life that caused me to lean on that why, lean on that going inside of my mind and, and start talking positively to myself. And, and that led to a lot of things through my life where there were some setbacks that I would continue to lean on that, which led to more that was like, this is making an impact on me. I need to find the space to share that. It wasn't about flipping a switch. It wasn't about here's the secret to life. It was more about this is something that sort of worked for me. And if I can share it with someone and maybe connect with one person, I think that's the goal too. You might change a million lives in a TED talk, but if you're really just trying to reach that one person in your message, then that's really a good way, I think, Tammy, to focus on the why. And, 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 and what that is and what is it that gets you up in the morning and keeps you up at night that's about an impact that, that you believe the world needs to hear. Yes, and the critical why behind the why is that we believe that you were created for a purpose, you have a purpose and maybe you found it or maybe you haven't found it yet, but that purpose changes, right? It may be something specific that's glaring to you. And it, it may not even have anything to do with a job. It just might be, this is your purpose, right? And you can be a global speaker and share that purpose with the world, but you can also share a lot of other topics on global stages. You don't have to share just that purpose. When I delivered my TEDx, I shared a vulnerable talk about when I was an airplane crash crisis manager, and I worked an airplane crash in which 200 um, commercial airline, I won't mention the airline, but commercial airline passengers uh, were on a, on a flight, and we only had four survivors. And it was very, it was a vulnerable moment for me, but I wouldn't necessarily bring that story into a corporation or I wouldn't have to, right? I could wrap a talk about resilience around it, of course, but Ted, it's really the time for you to think about that big talk that can change lives. It's a very humanitarian organization. Um, there are 10 commandments of Ted, which um, Bruce, are we talking about this today? Or are we talking about this next week? The 10 commandments. We're going to talk about that today, kind of towards the end. As okay, we perfect. The tip. Yeah. Perfect. So, you know, Bruce comes across as very authentic and most of, you know, most TEDx speakers do, but those who don't generally don't make it on the stage. And I will say how critical this training here is because we learned a lot before we put this course together. 
one of the things that I was shocked at is that if you don't follow the rules, TEDx is a big organization and they will pull you off stage. And uh, I guess it's that way with everybody. I mean, yesterday I was with the Dunham brothers. They had an HGTV special and they were pulled off stage um, about, they had a, a flip a flip special on flipping houses, but they were pulled off stage for their views on God and mentioning God. We actually had a TEDx talk speaker. One of our speakers was yanked from the entire platform. She never even made it, never even made it. Um, we, we petitioned them, we went back, we were shocked, right? And it was because apparently she mentioned God in her talk and they pulled her off the stage. Now, if that's their rule, whether we like it or not, that's their rule. And so we just wanna share with you that you know, when you're on stage delivering your own keynote, do whatever the heck you want. But if you want a TEDx and you're, you're going for an edition, it's our job today in this course to prepare you and tell you the ugly truth that you, you can't sneak it in, right? Because they pulled her and she's a wonderful speaker, great girl, and they yanked her talk before it even made it in the lineup. So it's really interesting. They could have picked on a myriad of things and they picked on that. And so content matters and wow. it really does, um, you know, your why matters. So let's do a few minutes on your why. Um, we've had a lot of amazing talks. As you can see, um, Sam Burns, his why was more than just to talk about himself, right? Because he didn't just talk about himself. He talked about the philosophy for a happy life, which was a great, great title. So Bruce, can you share with everybody a little bit, maybe just a couple minutes on your why and how did you pick your TEDx topic when you could have talked about anything? Yeah, so thanks, Tammy. And, and maybe it gets to what I had talked a little bit about before. I'll take, I'll take that a little deeper. You know, I was kind of this wordy guy, right? This, and all of a sudden I started writing and I started sharing messages after I went through a very challenging time in life. And what I realized was that this nerdy mind game guy was having an impact on others, whether it was friends or social media folks, et cetera, just on choosing a mindset approach when the chips were down. And I thought, I've got to find a stage. I think, I, I think there's enough here because of the feedback I was getting that my why was, can I help others think about being in a spiral versus a launch ch challenge to choose launch? Is there a way? And, and I was finding one and I just felt my why was, I'm here because I've always been this word nerd or this mindset guy, but it's got traction and maybe there's one person that can hear this message and could potentially turn their dial from you know, despair to looking at, you know, a possibility way of thinking, Tammy. So that was really my why is if I could, if it had that kind of impact on me, and then I was starting to get some. Well, wait a minute now, I got to interrupt because okay. we got to dig a little deeper here because I remember, uh, here's where they, they're getting a lot more, right? Uh, I remember when you first submitted your talk that we went through a coaching session and we talked in detail about what really drove you and it's easy to say it's easy to talk about where you are now but what really drove you back then were two things number one your mom so you had a powerful feeling um, and connection with your mom who had died and number two and, and your birth story, right, was remarkable and that always remained with you. And then number two, you had this really um, epiphany moment. And there is somebody else on this, on this call that, you know, uh, on this training course that uh, I'm sure ha have had these epiphany moments where you feel like it's just you're being, you know, God speaking through you and you're 
it's like this crossroads moment, I call it, right? And you had this epiphany moment um, where you just decided to start writing one night after a traumatic event. Can you share a little bit about that? Because I don't want to lose the fact that there's always that one moment that we have that is this crossroads moment. You know, a lot of TEDx speakers like Tanya Wehmeyer, who talked about stranger danger. She was a very successful salesperson and decided to talk about how her grandfather had abused her when her parents dropped her off at her grandfather's. And nobody knew this until a couple years ago, literally a couple years ago when she got on the TEDx stage, her family didn't know. And, but she just decided to let it out, right? So sometimes it's your, it's your inner why. It's your secret. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so you're right. I had a an amazing upbringing with a medical trauma with my mother the day she was born. Some of you know this. She had a dissecting aortic aneurysm on the day I was born and fought for 45 days before she saw me to live. She never gave up. And so she had this, this, this upbringing in our family of gratitude. And my father was the silent patient, but also a word guy. And when I had, I had an amazingly positive childhood um, where there was possibilities all the time. It, so it was almost like there will be nothing that you can't overcome until I hit something that I didn't think I could overcome. And I call that a bam moment. And for me, it was a job loss. And that's really the trigger where I felt like, oh my gosh, all this is coming together. I, I've got, I've got to, I'm melding this, this way to, 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 sort of think about life and it began writing and it began an approach to mindset. And in the talk, what I really tried to do then was, was issue a challenge. And we'll get to that probably in the, in the next session as to how we kind of go about the structure. But it was, it was to challenge others when they're in a time of, of adversity to, to think about what they can do, the possibilities versus the limitations. And that's really what drove it for me was, was that moment, and that just changed everything for me. Yes. And so if there's one thing that, literally one thing that we could really shift your mindset on in this course tonight is to go back to that why and, and really be authentic, um, just like Bruce did, just like Tanya did. And spend time alone. So the, the way to do that would be to spend some time alone. Again, I promise you, erase all commercial thoughts. Don't think about what will help sell my book or my program. Or you may be you know, a, a construction worker and want to deliver a TED Talk. Don't, don't think it has to be on construction or real estate. If you're a money manager, don't think it has to be on how, how to teach people, you know, the value of money. It's just, please, you know, spend some time alone. I call that a retreat with yourself. Whenever I'm coaching someone, I, I say, I want you to come back to me with three topics, but I really want you to take a date with yourself in an overnight retreat in a hotel without your phone, with a journal. And these are the hard things that TEDx speakers do, they really do take a personal retreat alone in a hotel or a tent or a cabin on the river alone, maybe with their dogs and no cell phone in a journal. Um, they think about their worst day of their life. I mentioned that in, in my own TEDx and they, they talk about their their best day sometimes, like Sam Burns did. I love that because he inspires others. So hopefully we have um, really kind of changed your mindset on topic. I had a lot of audition videos come in that were very, very commercial and it just doesn't work. If it doesn't move your heart and soul, it's not going to work. It's really different than any other media. I would say a TED talk is more like um, a movie than a book, right? Because in a movie theater, it better move your soul and your emotions. 
And whereas a book, you could write a nonfiction book that just tells someone the seven steps to success and it might not move your heart, right? So hopefully this has caused you to think differently. As we go, we are checking chat throughout this whole TEDx bootcamp. So please send any questions you want. I see um, there are new people joining that you may or may not see and that's okay. Um, so the next thing we want to talk about is, you know, how, well, we covered how do you get to your why? Because at this point you might be thinking, gosh, my talk that I had isn't powerful enough. And if you're thinking that, you know, go and watch some TEDx talks, but you can't talk about an idea that's already out there because that's not authentic either. So if you're thinking your talk isn't powerful enough, you might be right. I mean, you might be right, you may not. So spend time, just spend time alone, really contemplating um, what your talk should be and have a blank journal. And I believe that it'll come to you. It should be something that really drives you or perhaps it's a problem that you want to solve. So for a long time, you know, we all have these different interests and I had a passion for world school and I world schooled my kids. And at the time I met with a lot of people that said, it's never going to work. You're ahead of your time. It's just, nobody's ever going to do that. And of course now, you know, everyone has done some form of homeschool or world school, including me. And it could be abuse, but it doesn't have to be. It could be inspirational, but it doesn't have to be. Just find your why and then make sure you feel comfortable enough to have the courage to deliver it, okay? And when we add you to the group, we will make sure in the private group that we have posted the TEDx talks for you to kind of see the different types of talks. We're also posting a workbook for you that is a TEDx bio workbook that'll give you ideas on how to create your bio if you haven't already and how to make it consistent across platforms so that when you apply, audition, or do a keynote even, that you have the same powerful bio that doesn't read like a resume and talk about awards or degrees but something that speaks to the heart. Because in Sam Burns' talk, you did not hear one thing about a degree from Harvard or any award, right? And so none of that matters when it comes to um, TEDx. So Bruce, do you wanna recap a little bit of uh, what we've covered so far, which is yeah. a lot? Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna screen share again, guys, because we've got a slide to kind of summarize. Give me a second. You guys are awesome bearing with the technology guy here. So let's see the text TEDx summary here. Tammy, you wanna, uh, you wanna take, uh, take one of these and I'll take, take a couple? Sure, you bet. So I love what is TEDx and why does it say ideas worth sharing? Because you have to take that to heart. It truly is ideas worth sharing. If you just want to get on the TEDx stage to be famous, hey, it's it's going to happen. It's a great launch pad, but I would say that's not the reason to be on the TEDx stage. Go be a global speaker on, you know, Anthony Robbins stage or something. But uh, if you want to change lives, the TEDx stage is for you, Bruce. You can go to the next one. Yeah, Sam. I mean, authenticity, right? I mean, think about it. Here's a guy that. It probably took an awful lot for him to, to get up on stage and, and, and share his story. I mean, he just wanted to play the snare drum in the marching band, right? And it was not about his challenge. It wasn't about a setback. It, for him, it was about just telling his authentic story. And I mean, I bet that you could ask 10 different people and they would give you 10 different feelings or takeaways from what he talked about. I mean, perseverance would be one, right? Positivity. I look at what I can do. I don't focus on what I can't do, well, you know, et cetera. So the authenticity aspect, and that's kind of an overused word, but I, I'll tell you that personally, 
the struggle, the challenge I had was, did my message matter? Was it going to make a difference? Was it going to make an impact? Because I, I, I'm used to doing sales presentations. But Tammy helped me through my process of it's not about a pitch. It's not about that. It's about formulating your story that's going to have that impact. And authenticity was the, the big part. I'm a sales guy, so I'll take the next bullet, uh, Tammy. It isn't a pitch. You know, in sales, we talk about stop selling your product and start selling the problem you solve or feature advantage benefit or, you know, why I'm better than my competitors. This is nothing like that. In fact, the vulnerability about a TED is really, I think, what opens you up to the audience just absorbing you. So it's almost like being willing to say, this is something that was a real challenge for me. And then launching to how did you go about solving that? How do you look at the world differently because of the situation and, and, and nowhere near a pitch? So Tammy, we, we do authentic, authenticity, but you may want to take that or the next one. And then we'll go to the t uh, 10 commandments. You bet. So in this course, we just really wanted to drive home in this first module that TEDx is about authenticity. So it truly is about who you are. It's not about your expertise. It's not that you're the best engineer in the world or the best home builder or the best presenter, like we talked about. It's about authenticity, but I would encourage you to think of all of your content and life that way. If you look at Oprah, whether you liked her or not, Oprah became quickly this unknown woman who wasn't the most beautiful woman in the world. And she rose to be the most famous, wealthiest woman in the world because she talked about a personal experience of being, uh, of being abused as a child. And she talked about what it was like in that moment and how she separated from herself. So if you think back to your emotions and when you uh, when you felt the saddest or when you felt the most joy um, or when you felt disrespected or something that's just so passionate that you're so passionate about, that might be the one thing that you are called to teach on in this moment in time. And the last item would be uh, the Ten Commandments of Ted. This is kind of like, okay, it's the rules, but we have to cover them because a lot of people go into a TEDx audition unaware and they don't understand that TEDx has very, very specific rules. So Bruce, I don't know if you can, uh, if you have those, here we go, perfect. And I'll let you take it away. Okay, so I got to put the readers on here too, guys. So I think, so, you know, there's 10 rules, right? And it's it's some of the stuff we've talked about, but, and I, and I won't read them to you. Well, certainly this is going to be in the material, but, you know, it's got to be unique, right? It's got to be, and, and that's what you celebrate is the fact that it might be quirky. It might be something that you, you know, you have a way of speaking about things. It's not the normal shtick, as it says, right? And, 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 and it also... Tammy taught me this. And so, I, you know, I know this is sort of overall, but I got to give kudos to Tammy for a lot of things I learned here. She said to me, Bruce, think about your talk possibly impl impacting a million people. And I'm like, well, I might know like 350 people in my life and, you know, 20 of those are close friends or whatever, but a million people possibly. So that's, I think, the second point is, is to dream big about the message. Think about the impact. I call it the ripple right? One message can ripple out and impact more people than you could even imagine, okay? So let's see. Um, it, uh, being curious and even asking questions in your TED. You know, I thought about this. This thing was bothered, sort of the Columbo, right? If you guys remember Columbo back in the, back in the days, that dates me a little bit, but he always had that extra question. Very, very curious, tied to his passion, right? Tied to the passion, okay? Man, we're going to talk a lot more about this in future sessions, but it's the storytelling that grabs yes. me on others' TED Talks. So I really tried to weave a story into my, and it's personal. It's going to be a story about you, not, not all of the downtrodden part, 
but it's the story that's enough to talk about your launch, which then yes. inspires others, right? Tammy, you want to take one of these uh, and moving forward? You bet, you bet, you bet. And I want to make sure you guys know that all of this will be placed in the group and texted to you, okay? So you'll get this. And this, your homework this week is going to be to study this because chances are there's going to be a lot that you don't know. So item number four, thou shalt tell a story. When they say you need to tell a story, remember that not everybody is a storyteller. Some people are, and if you're a D-type personality like me, you might just be a but let's get to the bottom line type person. I know there's a couple people uh, listening that are like that, I'm sure. And so don't be intimidated by thou shalt not tell a story. What that really means is kind of push your comfort zone. I had to do that in my own talk. I coach our speakers to do that. Tell a story, but don't think that you have to be that guy or that girl that kind of like is the whole storyteller. So if you're a bottom line person and you feel discomfort sharing truth, it's still okay. Just be more detailed, right? Um, number five of the 10 commandments of Ted is you shall freely comment on other speakers. So they're really saying that during your audition or your talk, you can comment on what other people say, okay? And you can form opinions and it's okay to form an opinion. Item number six, you shall not flaunt your ego. And for a professional speaker, a lot of times professional speakers, people look at them as egotistical, but they're just, you. they've been speaking so long that, they're used to getting asked for autographs, for instance, a lot of our speakers are on the street or they are used to getting on stage and delivering a powerful presentation for a corporation and they want to be flawless. And again, TEDx is the opposite of that. We don't wanna to be too perfect. So be vulnerable, that's item number six. Speak about your failure as well as your success. Um, the number seven in the Ten Commandments of Ted we've already covered is thou shalt not sell from the stage, not your company, not your goods, not your writings, not your desperate need for funding. Thou, thou will be cast aside into outer darkness. And I can tell you they mean that. They mean that. Can I, can I take number, number eight, Tammy? Yes, please so, do. This was a tough part, right? Because there's folks that are just naturally funny or they can tell a story or they've got timing that will evoke, you know, a, a laughter emotion. Um, I don't think they're telling you to be a stand-up comic here. But one thing that I would, I would absolutely say is we all have things in common. And if we can bring something of a, of a, of a funny situation or an awkward situation that we experienced, it's likely gonna be something that others have experienced as well. And my example was that, you know, my wife speaks a language that often I don't understand and it is English. And I just used a story about what I heard her say when she asked me to get the Baileys was I went to the liquor cabinet while we were cooking. And when I came back, she sent me to the spice cabinet because she wanted bay leaves, not bay leaves. And I talk about how words have perspective. And I mean, I don't know about, I mean, so maybe it's a relationship related humor. Maybe it's a parenting relation of, of humor or, or, you know, maybe you're in the military and there's something humorous about, you know, a, a comrade you had or, you know, a, a, in, in the service or, or maybe, you know, it's something like that. But don't be afraid to think of your humor as finding a common thing that's going to be understood by everyone and then just craft your story around that. So anyway, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time on the humor aspect because it doesn't mean you need to tell a joke, 
but right. it's something that even life situation, because then you're aligning. And when you're aligning, your audience is with you. And I'll add to this, I think that if you make your audience the hero of your story and your TED, you're going to activate them. You're going to bring them with you and they're going to leave with something that they didn't have before you talked to them. Correct. That's so accurate. And I also want to add to what Bruce said, because we really want you to know the truth in this course before you actually have to go to an audition. And this applies to this rule, uh, number eight in the TED, the 10 commandments of TED. It really applies to all speaking. And that is that even though it says that laughter is good, and don't forget that you can have levity, right? Even Sam Burns was able to do that in his talk, even though think about how he gave his TEDx talk and he knew he was going to die. Like he knew that and he still made everyone laugh. But I do want to say that authenticity trumps all. So authenticity is number one above all things. I'm not a funny person and I'm really deep because of the things I, I went through. You will either be a funny person naturally or a deep person or a combination of both. But I knew that I didn't want to be funny and, and I wasn't. So just because you have the 10 commandments of Ted, they're a guideline, but when it comes to content, make sure you understand that you don't have to put laughter in your talk just because it says, remember that laughter is good, okay? Absolutely, if it's there, yeah. embrace it. I guess that's probably the best way to say, it. if it's there, bring it. If not, it's not a requirement. That's right. And you might laugh about something, you know, you might laugh about yourself, right? Um, and number nine, oh my gosh, critical. Thou shalt not read your speech. That goes without saying. When it comes time to deliver your talk, hopefully Bruce and I will be coaching you before your audition and one-on-one. -on -one, and we will say, you need to deliver your talk on video in the mirror 100 times, just like I did, just like he did. I mean, I was saying some really bad words. It was not a happy day when I auditioned for my talk or when I, when I auditioned myself, I should say, for my own personal talk. It's a lot easier coaching other people. And I always tell them, do it 100 times, no matter how many days or times it takes to do it a hundred times. And it's so hard to memorize your speech, but you absolutely must. Mm -hmm. And that's the good news. It's a lot easier to memorize it. If it's only 11 minutes, short and sweet, that's what we shoot for 11 or 12 minutes. Number 10, thou shalt not steal the time of those that follow. So here we are at seven o'clock. And if I keep going, I'm going to be stealing your time away from your family and friends and whoever, right? Uh, because we promised you this course would be one hour in this session. And this, we just really wanted to give you today the foundation of what everything that you need to know in TEDx. And Bruce, you can take down um, the TED, the 10 commandments of TED, because we will post them in the group. And I don't know, do we um, want to take a Q&A right now or would you like to um, go ahead and wrap up and put that, put that in the group? Because we, I know we've already gotten a lot of questions and we will from people that are just ready. If you have an audition right now and you need a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, please contact us. But I promise you, you will get so much out of next week. We'll send you this on replay as well. And you do have uh, some homework that we're going to be sending you about crafting your bio, which is really building the foundation. Um, also, please study the Ten Commandments of TED. Yeah, so I know it's eight. It's a couple minutes after eight. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming. Hopefully you got some good information out of this. And Tammy, maybe we can open it up for some questions. So take, if, if you need to drop, drop. But if there's some specific questions, just 
maybe come on off mute and maybe we maybe we take it till 10 after and take a few questions if I mean I'm good with that Tammy if you are and don't forget that in the group we will be encouraging questions okay and so uh, thank you Ellen says this was really wonderful and you're going to learn a lot that I sure didn't know before I even became a TEDx host, I didn't know, right? And um, we're going to talk about a lot of things in the next session, like what rule you do want to break. <laughs> There's one rule you <laughs> definitely want to break. And it's critical, critical to your brand, critical. Um, not every TEDx host or audition that you go on will be friendly or aligned with your values. And sometimes you won't get people that are intuitive or that understand really that a TEDx talk is timeless. So next week, we're gonna talk about the details of constructing a timeless talk that lasts for a thousand generations, you know, as long as the internet's available, right? And what to wear and all of that. Um, one of one comment that we had, uh, not so much a question, but a comment, is that I can understand why you would need courage. And I would just say, if there's something that you really feel led to talk about, maybe it's on this platform or maybe it's not. And that's only for you to decide. It might not be the right timing for you to talk about your biggest childhood wound. So don't feel pressure, okay? And then a couple of questions. So Ephraim said that, um, what is the difference between TEDx and TED? There's a big misconception about that. They really are the same. So TED was developed as a stage that people would come and kind of like uh, the TV show Shark Tank, right? Where you're on the show, but then it grew. It grew so much that they realized they had to provide a way for more people to be visible. So they did it um, locally. So TEDx is local, not like at a headquarters stage. And TEDx carries, some TEDx talks have way more views like Sam Burns than a normal TED talk. So there's not, there used to be a kind of a clout to be on TED versus TEDx, but there's not now. Um, in fact, TED was actually shut down uh, during COVID, okay? And so if you can get really a TEDx interview or audition, that's the thing to shoot for. And we're going to share with you guys next week, a list of auditions coming up. So we're going to really get into kind of uh, details next week. Um, Bruce, do you want to take the next question, which is? Yeah, this is from Ellen. Um, question is, if you have, it looks like a lot of topics, um, talk on from the heart, how do you whittle them down? Uh, wow. So, um, I'm referring, I'm thinking about a, a book that I read, um, and I, now I've got to remember the title. It's either, I think it's The On Purpose Person, Ellen, and um, the author, Kevin McCarthy, talks about how you, how you create your who you are statement. It's sort of, it's, it's I am, and then you write a paragraph, and then his exercise on that is to whittle that down to basically having five words, I am, and then finish that. So, it's, it's okay to have a lot of topics from the heart, but I bet if you analyze them and, and, I, and, and we know each other a little bit, so I know you've got, you know. And, and I, I can jump in and say, it all yeah. goes back to the personal retreat. You really okay. need a date with yourself also, you know? I like the I am to get clarity because it's all about clarity. And, you know, I, I know I can talk to someone in 30 minutes, in immediate 15 minutes, and know exactly what they should talk about. And a lot of times it's not what they were planning on talking about, right? Um, and then we craft a talk from there. But I think that personal retreat with yourself one night where you write down in a journal 
um, you can do that exercise that Bruce said, or you can write down in a journal every single topic that you feel truly passionate about. Something that this moves me, right? This really moves me. Or something that you feel that you just want to get out there off your chest into the universe, right? And if you're still struggling, please, by all means, this is something we can we can really uh, give you clarity on in 15 minutes in a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with us. Um, you don't need that. You may come up with it on your own, but sometimes people have so much that they're good at, like really so many balls in the air. Um, but it's that one thing that really kind of moves hearts that yeah. is the thing that we want you talking about. I hope that helps. Yeah. So thank you guys. Um, thank you for being at the course and uh, TEDx Secrets, TEDx Bootcamp. And hopefully you learned a lot of really meaningful information and not a lot of fluff. And we love you guys. If you can join next Sunday night, we're going to send you a link. If you can't join, it's okay. You don't have to be held hostage. We designed it so that you could also get the course on video replay. So if you have a date with your significant other or your spouse or an obligation, don't worry about it. We will make sure that we get you all the material. I know there's some of you that probably have burning questions um, about details and that's okay. We will be talking and posting to the group and getting you all kinds of stuff on text, okay? So thank you for joining us. You guys have a wonderful night. 